All right, it's time to talk about all the fun and exciting things going on this week in Reddit, and let's let's start it out with Case's day out. He went down to Arizona, Case. You were let out of the asylum on uh, work release to see your parents. Um, first off, did they did they put the, the the rubber mouth guard in, or were you free to go ahead and chew what you needed to chew all day? <clears throat> well, the the most important thing was that my flight left at five oh five a.m., so I was at the airport at three thirty a.m. Um, and the game. Uh, at, well, I mean, I, I could say uh, there's two hour difference between. Uh, where we are and Arizona right now, um, that area of Arizona, because they don't observe um, daylight savings. But uh, despite that, okay, so it was a very, very long day. A very extremely long day, and and they changed our they they changed what plane we were flying on, so I end up with middle uh, in the middle seat oh. on flights. It's good you're not a big guy, Case. Oh, oh I'm big enough. I'm big enough that uh, I, I'm tall enough that the middle seat is a bad situation. My knee just... I can't, I can't sleep. I can't... Because I can't lean one way or the other. Right. There's two girls on either... Either side of me on the way down to Phoenix. It's not bad. Um, I mean, two two you know girls in their probably thirties, uh, and I'm not saying you know like one way or the other, but like at the same time, when all I want to do is try to sleep with them, and I I can't lean one way or the other way. Like it's just not a socially acceptable situation for me. Uh, so I did not get any sleep on the flights. Oh I got I we got to the game, and I was just a fucking zombie. Um, but. I mean, uh, once I got to the game, you know, I the adrenaline started pumping. But <laughs> I, uh, I remember messing with my wife, my first international flight, and my wife was nervous. Of course, we were a young couple at the time. Went yeah. and flew across, um, slept in the flight. I woke up and I look and I wake up and I'm laying on my left side and, and I look at the, the 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 seat that was empty next to me. It was a window seat, and uh, one of the stewardesses is, is is laying in it sleeping. And I looked and I was like, oh wow, okay, whatever. I thought about it, and that, when I, when I landed, I was like, "Everything okay? Was the flight good?" I was like, "Yeah, I slept with the stewardess on the way." <laughs> <laughs> I still do that every now and then just to get murdered. It's mm-hmm. great. All right, so let's talk about this Arizona game. Um, I, there's a lot. There's a, there's, there's a, a lot, lot to unpack, to man. Unpack. There really is. Yes, there is. Um, the Lions. We'll just we we said this in the post game show. A stellar three and a half quarters out of the team. I mean, they just yeah. look just 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 killed. Yeah. Them. Man, how about uh, what was the feels in in the stadium? How were Arizona fans? I mean, what was the mix? I guess first from Arizona okay, to the okay. Lions. So yeah, I mean, first of all, the stadium is about two thirds full, and I don't know how much I- an average game is, but um, despite the fact that with the Kyler Murray with the Kyler Murray hype the way it was, I kind of expected it to be a packed house. But it is Arizona, and they're not exactly known for packing the house. Man, so like. Um, that wasn't a huge surprise. Um, I would say that maybe oh, 20, 20 to twenty five percent of the fans there were Lions fans. Mm. Even, even okay, so even as we're waiting for our flight in Minneapolis, I'm seeing Lions fans like lining up for the flight, and uh, <laughs> people in Lions gear. We land in Phoenix, and there's Lions fans flocking out of the airport. Like I'm like, oh shit, this is crazy. <laughs> it really was. It, it surprised me how much of that uh, there were. There were several, and, and of course, you you wouldn't you know pick this up on the broadcast, but there were uh, um, uh, several Lions chants that happened throughout the nice, game. Nice. Uh, they got picked up like pretty well throughout the whole stadium. Um, so yeah, no Lions fans traveled really well for this one. That that made me very happy. Uh, the guys <laughs> in the section, I, and we we're sitting up kind of nosebleed section. But sure. um, this has been a big year for you with the training camp. Media yeah, no, it has been. It has been a very big year for me. On Ford um, Field, on the field. Now you've gone to a game. Damn, man, yeah. this is it. This is. Yeah, it really was. It really has been a huge, huge football year for me. Um, but no, I mean our section alone was predominantly Lions fans, nice. and I'm, I'm that uh, why exactly that is. I, I couldn't tell you, but um, yeah, it was it was actually really impressive the number of Lions fans there. So that was big. Did you see um, what you do? Well, and 
Yes, <laughs> sort of. Uh, there was one guy, and we got there a little. We got there very shortly after the gates opened, because um, uh, having never been to a game before, we didn't know what to expect. Uh, with my folks, my girlfriend, and 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 we went in. And how drunk were you at the gates of arrival? None, none at all. Wow, this is this is. I had a, I had a beer in Minneapolis. Morning. I had a beer in Minneapolis at. 7.45 in the morning. This is the guy that did two shooters <laughs> on the way to training camp at 7.30 in the morning, folks. Yeah, this no, is- yeah, no that, that, I had a beer in Minneapolis at 7.45 in the morning. That was the only beer I had. Oh, Wow. Okay. Okay, cool. Did but, you still enjoy uh, it just as much as normal? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Good, good, good. But um, so there was a, a guy and he waved me down as we're going up and I was wearing my gray DLP, you know, uh, Lions with the head headphones t shirt, which I absolutely love. Detroit Lions Podcast dot com slash store. You can get all the t shirts. And and he he saw me and knew who I was and yelled, "Hey, Case, love your show!" And I went over and talked to him. And I I feel like such a dick. I was very distracted by the whole situation and did not. Uh, he said his name, and he's a Patreon supporter. And I do not remember what his name was. If he is, if you are listening right now, I apologize profusely. Please let me know, and we'll give you a shout out. The next, you're a dick. um, (laughs) You're totally. I was there with my family, and I'm all like, I was very. the The whole thing was very overwhelming. So I apologize for not, you know, um, remembering. How weird is that when people like. Say like say hey, love. I mean, you know, right? Well, I mean, I'm not used to. I'm totally 100 percent not used to it. Yeah. So, um, it, it was very much appreciated, though. Yeah. It was very nice of him. Um, it, the the guys right in front of me, there were there were four frat boy Lions fans right in front of us. They were they were having a lot of fun. That's cool. There was there was a couple guys who were very drunk right behind us. They were also having a lot of fun. Yeah, cool. Uh, the one of the guys right in front of us decided some at some point early in the third quarter when things were still looking really good to chug his beer, stand up, chug his beer and throw it at the ground as hard as he could. And he actually threw it on the guy in front of him. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then he, but then he profusely apologized to the dude in front of him for hitting him with a beer. It was empty ish. Um, <laughs> oh so there was no fight. There was, it was all good. And, and he was also the dude in front of him was a Lions fan. There were tons of Lions fans. So, um, that was cool that there were so many Lions fans. Um, it was it was awesome that that uh, again. I, I wish I could remember your name. Uh, called the you know yelled over to me. Uh, we will one hundred percent give you a shout out if you uh, let us know who you were. Yeah. Um, I got I got to say Reed. Um, just just as a side note, I had talked about the Raiders game and I was going to be in town. And it winds up I actually have to stop off in Phoenix on Monday before I go to the Bay Area, so I can't. I was going to fly in early, and I had an opportunity to go to see the Lions at the Raiders. And I was like, should I go? And a guy named Reed sent an email saying, hey, man, I've, I've been there a million times. It's okay. You can go there. You won't get murdered. Just don't be a dumbass like anywhere, and you'll be fine. And I was like, okay. Right. I feel good about it. And so, so, Reed, thanks for that response. It's, it, he, this was way back in the middle of August <laughs> that he did this. I, I've just responded. But, no, that, that, I, I was really totally going, but it literally just changed. Now I have to freaking fly out of here, go to Phoenix on Monday, and then up to the Bay Area, Bay Area for the rest of the week. So I'm not going to be able to, to go to that Oakland game. But I think it, it all depends. Arizona is a great place to go see a game as an away fan. Um Tampa is a great place to go see a, a game as an away fan. I think Oakland, you know, Reed says it's okay. Just don't be a douche bucket. And I think that's probably, there's probably a lot of truth to that. Um, but that's true anyway, right? Don't be a douche bucket. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, football does bring out some interesting If, it, if, if I'd been going to Philadelphia, I might have reconsidered, you know, wearing anything Lions related, but. Yeah, I, I wasn't thinking Arizona. I'm not anything. super concerned. Yeah, so I wasn't thinking of wearing any lions gear in Oakland. Just showing up, having some beer, and having a good time, but quietly cheering on the inside. <laughs> Things yeah. happen. <laughs> okay, sorry. No, I just I I, I, I want to take a talk about the way experience a little bit. Okay, so the game itself, right? You're there. Um, mm-hmm. When good things happen for the Lions, how how do you compare the cheering versus good things happening for the Falcons? Well, considering the, that I was surrounded by Cardinals. largely Lions fans, I mean, it got pretty rowdy whenever the Lions did anything good. Um, so, I mean, it, there there was definitely, you know, like I said, we traveled well as a fan base to this good. game. Good. But. All right. Let's talk about the game itself. Uh, people are having enough of their case their case feed now. Yeah. Um, this was this is interesting. A lot of, lot of really good football. 
uh, and we can break it into two games, really, the, the first three and a half quarters and the last half a quarter. Um, that first, a lot of things, right? We talked about this offense was going to be different than what people expected, right? And mm-hmm. and, and the, the, the nomenclature ever since Bevel was here was run first, run first, run first, run first. And you look at Stafford's numbers and Hawk's numbers and mm-hmm. the, the passing game out there, it's 180 degrees from what everybody said it was going to be that was and, and it wasn't like they weren't running the ball i mean they were running the ball pretty effectively i rewatched the game i i, I saw a couple times where carry on wasn't picking his holes wasn't following the line right and could have done more but i mean it's the first game everyone's a little rusty whatever i don't want to make excuses but well, the, the i want to talk about i want to get into the running game in the fourth quarter later but Okay, let's let's stick with the pre fourth quarter now. Yeah, uh, the running yeah. game was solid. The offense looked good. The defense looked good. I think that they 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 looked they look great out Again, there. First three quarters. The cornerbacks. <laughs> look at the cornerback play. We, oh, we got. Jesus! Tracy Walker was right. Incredible. He was everywhere. Oh, it was great. Did you see that catch he made? The interception. Yes. Oh, oh God. I yes. was like, we've got our first two way player. I son of a not, he's our wide out receiver on the field because you know when it when you're at the game live and you watch the play happen, it's hard to tell until you see the replay up. Right. But I, 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 when I saw it, I was like, nah, that's out of bounds. That's out of bounds. It was a great try, but then I watched. It. I was like, oh shit, no! I think he did that. I think he did that. Yeah, <laughs> really amazing. A lot of people haven't been talking about that. That was an incredible catch for a wide receiver. Tracy Walker is yeah. killing it, yeah. and 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 that's everything that we wanted to see out of him early this year. Yeah, yeah. So so they look great. Let's let's let's. Offense was good. Defense was well balanced. They were one thing to talk about is they were playing contain on Kyler Murray. They, they know Kyler Murray has wheels that he can move. He's a danger mm-hmm. to run. They were playing contain on him. So when people say, "Oh no, no, the sacks," you know, we didn't get the sacks. No, no, no. We were we were playing him. We were making him play quarterback. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's what yep. we were trying to do, and that's yep. what we wanted to do because he's fine. But look at the other piece we were concentrating on is batting balls. How many? Three, four batted balls. Damon Harrison with two fucking passes defended at the line of scrimmage. Yep. Unbelievable. Yep. A, a, a absolutely perfectly prescribed offense for our defense. I'm sorry for for Kyler Murray and the and the Cards offense, especially you know this super secret offense that they were supposed to be rolling out. Okay, let's break into the fourth quarter now because everyone knows about how great things were, and it literally was at the point where. I had to rewatch the game because the play before the timeout, I popped up to go to the bathroom. I was getting ready for the post game show. I felt overconfident. I came and, and as I'm as I'm heading to the bathroom, I check the slack, and all of a sudden it's just going like what the hell, right? And it was like I came back. I rewatched. I saw what happened with the timeout. It was like oh my god, the the beginning of the destruction. I'm going to say that you know everyone's talking about playing. Pre- Prevent. Um, there's some writers who are saying they didn't play prevent. Well, they, they barely played, played prevent. prevent. They played prevent in the first half a couple times on long third downs, but they didn't play prevent in the fourth quarter at all, almost at all. They, they played man de- coverage. Bad. So anybody saying that they were overdoing prevent defense doesn't have a fucking clue what they were talking about. Frankly, the the thing is, and, and this is this is my take after watching the game twice, they were freaking gassed. They were oh, absolutely out of shape, and they 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 were just run ragged. I want to ask you about what was the temperature like in the stadium? Was it hot or was it just no. was it inside the temperature? No. It was just like no. normal. Okay. My my uh, no. I mean, it's, it's a secret. Uh, we were cold. Um, <laughs> That's why again, there's no cramps, we're up right? Top. We're at the top. Uh, we're the we're like right right behind the AC, so I I, I can't speak rises. how it is on the field. Um, yeah, but I mean, it it, it is heavily AC'd in that stadium. Um, but. The, I mean, the gas thing makes sense 100%. And, and I wish that this thought had occurred to me a couple of weeks ago because I would have brought it up. It did not. When you're going to play a guy like Kyler Murray uh, the first week of the season, because it looked to me like it was a really good matchup for the Lions. And it was a really good matchup for the Lions through three, sure. through, through three quarters um, that you know they were going to stop the run, and they did. That they were going to contain Kyler Murray and get after him then as necessary, which they did. Um, but when you have to run around that much after a rookie quarterback who is a guy who is going to run around a lot, you're going to tire yourselves out. And when you, when you combine that with a bunch of guys on the defensive line who didn't play a lot in the preseason and whose conditioning clearly isn't up to where it should be, and how did how did Deshaun, the fourth quarter? How did Deshaun hand play? I uh, didn't play. 
What, how's, how, how's Jared Davis out there? Didn't play. Oh, were we missing some of our rotational players? Yeah. No, but I mean that, but I mean, even at that, like even at that had the guys like had Harrison and flowers and some of the other, you know, guys who missed some time on the line, Daniels, Ben, able to get up to their level of conditioning that they normally would have in a preseason that probably it, they probably wouldn't have ended up as gassed as they were in the fourth quarter but i'm thinking it, it, it I'm didn't thinking, occur to me it didn't occur to me that you know you play a rookie quarterback you're going to have to do a little bit more exercise a guy with wheels. You otherwise would and here's and well, here's did. the thing they they had to, they had chase him and if you look, watch the game again especially um if you, the, the condensed game is great. If you guys have a game pass, I, I, I highly recommend it. I wish I got money for pushing that thing because I could sell the hell out of it. It's, it is awesome. But uh, if you watch the condensed game, you can see just how much running the defense did throughout that game. So you have, yeah. you have the defense running like crazy against this this quarterback, this rookie who's who's a scrambler. And, and they were doing a great contain. job at and it. Then they just also, ran out. <laughs> uh, well, why did they run out? Well, they were, they had both of the fact that they had to run after him and the fact that they weren't conditioned as well as they could have been, right? Because right. they weren't playing as much because we're protecting against injury. That's, you know, and, and, and nobody was saying for them to play in the preseason. When they saw Jared Davis go down and rag down go down, everyone was wrapping everyone in bubble tape. I don't want to see him to week one. Well, this is what you get when you wrap him in bubble tape bubble tape you don't get the conditioning that you you want to see out of the team and then the other part is you had some rotational players out so guys were probably playing a little more than they would have it, it's it's yeah. a little bit of a perfect storm i for, do for what you see or what you saw yeah. happen i do want to just like admit that i that i that was a thing that i didn't predict and and should have predicted you know that that the lack of conditioning i i mean i didn't necessarily see it as a non-issue the lack of conditioning, but I didn't recognize just how important that would be in this particular situation when maybe we should have recognized that in this particular situation, that's about the worst time. You know, if we'd played Philip Rivers week one, Ooh, especially the way they played. Right. I have right. a lot of hope. We'll talk about that in the uh, we will talk about that in the look ahead. But, but, but the, just just the point being, you know, if they hadn't had to scramble around the field on every down you know, they yeah. probably would have had a little bit more left in the tank come fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. So now, I, just sorry to interrupt, but like just to, you know, it it also isn't a huge surprise to see a Matt Patricia defense start slow, you know. Right. It's almost it's almost like it's part of the plan. Right. right. I mean, they, they, they adjust over time um, and, and, and they grow and they, and they learn and about. Week four, it seems like they have film on all the other te teams, and that's when they start honing in on what the final form is. They're going to be as far as the defense, right? And yeah, I get that. If we see the offense that we saw in the first three quarters for the rest of the year, I'm 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 stoked. I'm freaking stoked. That was a great looking offense. That was an offense. Rem it reminded me not in the playbook, but it reminded me of the uh, dynamicism of the Linehan offense. Right. Right. So can I, fun. So fun. Go ahead. Can I talk now about the fourth quarter offense? You may. Okay. Um, that is when I thought that things went wrong. I mean, okay. So there were a few other things that went wrong earlier. Uh, Taylor Decker having a rough day. Um, that yeah. which is a side note. His worst, maybe his worst game of his career. I'm not about to. That that's a week one reaction thing. I'm not about to write him off. Um, I don't think Taylor Decker is a great offensive tackle. I but I do think he's about an average offensive tackle. And so, uh, I, if you if you want to say that Taylor Decker is terrible, I think you're buying the outlier. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Hundred percent. I mean, and the reaction and, and people put it all on Taylor Decker for a while. Right. Um, he Which, I mean, he had a really bad game, and I don't think anybody's yeah. going to argue with that. But yeah. like, if you, that's if, if if you look at I, if we had I had so many arguments in the off season with people who remembered a couple of bad games last year, and and that everything in those bad games was everything that they expected to happen this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, you didn't watch. It's like you only watched two games out of the out of the sixteen games. So. Uh, yeah, no, I, I would expect Taylor Decker to rebound. Hopefully, this whatever injury in his back is is um, is like on the on a Mahomes level, and it's not a big issue. Um, I've I've got something to to remind people of. You remember Calvin Johnson? He had a couple of bad games. 
You know, you yeah. Know, you know how, how much people are madly in love with Barry Sanders. And, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't mean to say that in, in a, in a crazy way because he is freaking amazing. He had bad games too. I remember, I remember him. I remember, I remember people screaming in Detroit that we got to trade Barry. I, I, I honestly oh, remember that. Geez, and and, and really? you look back, right? And say, what the heck? Did folks, they really? Folks. And that's what this game is with, with the Cardinals right now. Don't throw a tantrum. Don't overreact. We have a point, a data, one data point. You can't even draw a line. So, I mean, point. the worst game of Taylor Decker's career. Yeah, and hopefully. <laughs> so far. I mean, hopefully. And, and that, that's just not enough to, for me to say that he's done. Hopefully. Uh, I mean, it's, it's weird to say this, as a whole, but though. hopefully it was because he was dealing with something going on and that, and also hopefully that thing is not a permanent thing. Yeah. So I mean, an injury right now. That's why maybe we saw some rotations in on the, on the offensive line. We saw, obviously the team was trying to do things around that. Maybe he got dinged up a little bit during the game because he's on the injury report now. Uh, and, and they were trying and they were working on him and seeing what he could do in between. And that's why they're rotating people. You don't know, and, and they're not going to tell you. But the bottom line is for Taylor Decker and the team as a whole. I mean, this is the so this is the first year that Matt Patricia is undefeated in the first game of the season, right? I mean, it's, <laughs> it is a trend upward. So if you want to if you want to draw lines, you can say first game last year, first game this year. Oh, well, we got a tie this year and in, in the loss last year. They go fifteen zero and one. He will have an undefeated season. Exactly. <laughs> it's still possible. <laughs> I, it's just I just. I, I'm not saying that this is a, a is this is a 15-0-1 team. I'm just saying the people that are freaking out after one game where the game where the team for the majority of the game was just smoking. And, I mean, and you they really good- should have been way further ahead than they were. And and I, I want to talk about a few of those sure. things. But before I get into that, I want to talk about the fourth quarter offense because uh, I don't want to. I don't want to, you know, make it sound like uh, uh, shit smells like roses around here either. Because there was some problems. That's fair. Um, the fourth quarter offense. I understand a hundred percent, one hundred percent. I understand why they switched to a ball control, a uh, run the clock down offense when they did the run first offense that everyone expected, right? But you, the Lions ended up facing a higher percentage of eight man in the box looks yep. than any other team in the league last week. Literally, I mean, I mean, I, I don't remember where I saw the stat. It was probably on RNFL, but it probably came from PFF. Um, they faced more eight man in the box sets while they were trying to run the ball in the fourth quarter than any other team in the league. Like, like, I mean, it, because of what they did faced against eight man in the box, what they faced in the fourth quarter and over the game as a whole, they faced more than anybody else. Mm-hmm. Play some fucking play action and throw a few short passes. Jesus Christ. Matthew Stafford's no good at play action, though, right? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. You really want carry on and CJ to break one. But they weren't breaking them. They weren't breaking them. And that's and that's not really their fault. And I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to suggest one way or the other. Eight man one way or the other on CJ break. or carry on. I, I still have very high hopes for both guys. Uh, as the year goes on. But when you are facing that many eight man in the box situations, you are ripe for play action. You are ripe for that. And they waited until it was too late to try to put their foot back on the gas to actually move the ball. Yeah, no. And and what they needed to break was not break the run. They needed to break the eight man box to get themselves an opportunity to break right. the run and they weren't doing that and and they were playing to the strength of the defense rather than to the strength of the offense and that it was just it was just unfortunate um i guess we have to talk about the the timeout and and matthew saying trust me um i i, I want to remind people of matthew stafford screaming uh get out of bounds get the fuck out of bounds remember that um yep. a couple of years ago trying to run the clock run the 2 minute for the for the 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 comeback and the 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 wonderful work that we did um he was angry then too with one of his his receivers and yep. it, what happened it was fine i this whole trust me thing people are reading a lot into that i think it's a heat of the moment he's mad. i don't think he thinks these guys his coaching staff doesn't trust him I think it no. was a communication issue, 
And I think it'll never happen again. I guarantee, as as our good friend Ash said, there was a 90-minute meeting this week <laughs> in which they talked about trust. And uh, somebody was very quickly um, shown the door. And uh, they've, they've, they've got that under control right now. This kind of thing happens. Um, does it happen with Josh McDaniels and Tom Brady? Well, no. They, they, they have a lot more familiarity with each other. Um, I wasn't... I, 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 I mean... <sighs> Okay, so I get it. But watching from the stands when they took the timeout, I immediately understood why they took the timeout. I understand that it didn't work out. But I immediately, when they took the timeout, I said, okay, I get it. They want to save enough time just in case they have a chance to get the ball back. Let me get two alternate to. scenarios. And all, they, all they need to do, all they need to do in that, in that situation, they have the kicker with the strongest leg in the whole league. Okay? So that's a factor. All you have to do is get to the 45-yard line, and you've got a chance at winning the game right there. Let me give you two other scenarios, just just to kind of put it together. Let's say that ball is dropped and not complete on the timeout. Mm -hmm. And then they complete the one after the timeout. Brilliant Mm -hmm. move. Brilliant move. We have an absolute genius on the sideline. Right? Mm-hmm. That's that's the takeaway at that point for folks. Well, and they were driving on every single play but, but, against us, right? At that moment in time, a, it a wasn't like fate different. A flip of fate, different, right? And people yeah. freak out on it. What if they hadn't called the timeout and we'd gotten a delay game penalty? Why the fuck wasn't there a time? Oh my god! Right? I mean, it was it was right there. It was it yeah. was it was it was the clock was was down to the point where we were right there. I get it. I get why it was called. I don't like it. I don't like. I hate the fact. No, that I'm not saying it was they the called right decision. It I, the, I, right. Yeah. Oh darn! But it could have been any number of things. It just happened that that was a a good catch. It's just like the Trey Flowers face I've mask just later, the ticky tacky thing. That was a yeah. four. That takes him to fourth down. It's a whole different ball of wax on that drive. I've as seen. Well. I've seen way worse calls by coaches in way more important situations so flags challenge flags when you can right right i this is this was a relatively minor error in my personal opinion but that's just my personal opinion i know your mileage may vary yep yep. okay uh i know you had mentioned when we were we were briefly chatting before the show you wanted to kind of give some love to larry fitzgerald have you heard of yeah, him before? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll give some love to Larry Fitzgerald, and then I'll give some a little bit of hate to one of our players. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think I know who. <laughs> um, Larry, uh, it was it. My okay, so my family, my girlfriend, my my folks, my girlfriend are not football fans they went to the game with me more or less to you know make sure um, you weren't drunken right (laughs) right Uh, no i mean i mean it was a you know it was an event for all of them and um they didn't the but my folks live in arizona so you know they watch the news they know who larry fitzgerald is they think he's a pretty class guy um when i started clapping when uh even when just when he was coming out the tunnel and they said, Larry Fitzgerald. And I started clapping. And all the, even all the Lions fans around me, we're all, we all start clapping. My girlfriend, who's, you know, not like, is, is very new to this. Not too new. Looks at me. She's like, why are you clapping for a Cardinals player? You don't, you don't understand. You don't understand. He, he, he's earned it. <laughs> <laughs> and my folks, you know, and he's earned it. If we're going to get burned by a player in the NFL, he's, he's just about the one that I would most want us to get burned by. And and he burned us quite a few times. He he had an absolutely incredible game. Nice wish, dickhead. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean I have I, I I can't think of a player that I have less ill will towards, There's despite no. you know, despite anything he's ever done to us. There's no other than, no, no finer pox that I'd rather have. <laughs> right, exactly. I, I, I'm not sure I can put it better than that, Chris. But no, I, it was cool. Um, it was cool to watch him have a have such a legendary night, um, even if it was so frustrating at the same time. Okay. Um, All right. Uh, let's let's. I'm gonna let, let's do this. I'm gonna let you put somebody on blast because I know you want to. Um, I I I went pretty light on him in the in the post game show, oh. and it's it's something that you you guys I want you to know. I, it's one of those. I, I'll go back to Caldwell. Don't get too high, don't get too low. 
right? And I, and and I'm trying. I'm right after the game. We're still processing. I'm still got the data running through my brain, and that's why your calls are so important on this show because I want to I want to know what you guys are feeling. I want to know where you're at, and 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 we talk about it being therapy a little bit, but it's also we find we find the errors, we find the places we want to be angry about, and where we need to improve. So this guy, we're gonna let you do your thing, and then we're gonna we're gonna we have a call. We're gonna let him uh, put, put the, the team on blast as well. So go ahead and hit it, here, Case. So both for our listeners and you, Chris, I don't know uh, how much people remember, but during the training camp, after after we went to training camp, we had our live shows. I don't remember and, much of those. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't blame you. Um, <laughs> one guy I kept bringing up and that I was nervous about, and it was Jamal Agnew. And I was like, I love the dude with the ball in his hands, but it just seems like he bobbles so many of them. And uh, it, I don't know how many Lions fans remember Stefan Logan. That might trigger trigger some pretty harsh um, uh, PTSD in some yeah. people, but um, oh. not to downplay anything. But um, that's who I'm going to start relating him to because Stefan Logan was phenomenal Magic with the ball when he had the ball. Yeah. Jamal Agnew is phenomenal when he has the ball. Although in this particular game, it what he didn't exactly do a ton. But you know, we all know, we've all seen him. We all know that he can do amazing back. things. He turned his back to the defenders. I mean, he was just terrible. He was horrible. people talk about and, how bad uh, Taylor Decker was. You can't even rank um, Agnew on par with him. Every time he touched the ball, it was just. Just but was, it's going that way, man. It is going that way. Wow. His his fumbled punt may have been the single most significant moment of the game yeah. because it changed the field in a place where, A, we could have had a chance to score, and I don't know that we would have. But what it did was it guaranteed the, the care, uh, that the, that the uh, Cardinals were going to score. If that hadn't happened, it's a whole other score game when it comes down to the fourth quarter. And a ball control offense, even the way they ran it, even if I don't particularly love the way they ran it, still would have worked. That moment changed the game more than any other moment in the game. And you can't have it. And and it, it it if it was a first time for him, if it was a first time, but no, we saw it in training camp. We saw him bobble those yeah. things in training camp. Yeah. He, he did it last year. He did it the year before even. He, he managed to come away with it and get get away with it his rookie year when he had the all pro, you know, returning season and I, I, he had an amazing season and don't get me wrong, but even if you go back and look at his highlights from year 1, you can see that not all of those were cleanly caught. Right. And it does, it, it, it continues to make me nervous. And ACL and, doesn't and, change your ability to catch the ball. And I talked about it in the preseason. And so, like, I even said it to my family before the game. I was like, I love this kid. He's great. I really hope we see some good returns from him today. But I am nervous. Yeah. And so, what's the talk? There's been talk in the Slack about McKissick and his ability. He, he returned balls in, the, in college. He's not as dynamic, but if he's more he consistent, right. he even took one to the house. Yeah, if he's in more consistent, um, I will take that right now. Yeah, because the dynamicism so far it has cost you seven points, right? Yeah, and I truly, I mean, I I don't mean to make it sound overly dramatic, but I truly believe that, like, if the Lions don't let them score on that drive that they give them, you know, an extremely short field on. Mm -hmm. That is the difference in the game. Yeah, I, I want to right there more than any other single play. That is so, the difference. The so, game. do you think all the fans should uh, get on Twitter and at? Uh, no, Jamal I think that would be a horrible idea. I, I, well, I, I, I hope to Taylor. Nothing. It seems like it yeah. seems like the, it's the right thing to do. All the kids are doing it. I hope nothing but the best for Jamal Agnew yeah. as a person. Leave these poor guys alone. I am concerned again. A concerned game. about him as a player. Yeah, no, I, I, am, I agree with you 100 percent on that. Much less concerned about Taylor Decker. More concerned about Taylor Decker's injury than his longevity with the team. Right, his ability to play for the team. Um, and so that's where things are with him. Okay, uh, let's go on. We got we, we we put Agnew on blast in in the way that we do, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, let Malcolm put the team on blast right now. Welcome here, calling in to start the season off. 
fresh from uh, Atlanta, Georgia now. So I uh, got a chance to watch the game on Sunday ticket, which was great. Everything was going well. What happened, happened. And uh, I know it uh, it sucks to say, man, but I'm extremely disappointed. Um, try not to fall into a black pit of negative expectations, but obviously we played better than we played last year. That's no question to start the season. However, there's still some things that popped up in terms of, you know, coaching mistakes, player mistakes, performances that leave your head scratching and leave you concerned. And if you're not concerned, and I don't think you're totally paying attention here, um, setting the time out aside, there were still several opportunities for the Lions to win that game of regulation. There were still several opportunities for us to actually yeah. um, stop the Cardinals and keep them from even getting to the point of getting to overtime. And for whatever reason, we couldn't execute. And all I want the Lions to do, man, is just execute and win and do what they are capable of and live up to the expectations that we have for them and I think that they have for themselves. So um, try not to get discouraged, but that was a tough one to swallow. Try not to get discouraged because I have pretty high expectations for the team. I thought this was a 9 or 10 win team that could make the playoffs. Maybe they still can. It's one game. We can't write the season off after one game, and I don't think anybody is doing that. But, my goodness, that felt that felt a little – like some stuff that I was seeing before, and I want that all to go away. I just want the Lions to be clean and get this W. So hopefully we take care of business against San Diego. they got some guys that are key that are going to be on the shelf. Hopefully we don't see some of the same stuff and that offense continues to hum like it did from the middle of the first quarter until about the beginning of the fourth quarter. Talk to you guys next week. Thanks. So, see, just really quick, Malcolm, and I and I love your calls, man. You're always you're always good, and now you, you get under the three minute mark. You're really good at that. You've you've really honed your skill. But you call them San Diego. <laughs> 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 just call them the Chargers. It's easier. It's easier. I don't even I don't even know where they're from anymore. It's gonna be like that with the Raiders. Pretty soon, it's just gonna be the Raiders, right? Um, <laughs> the Asheville Chargers. <laughs> um, interesting. The Bismarck Chargers. <laughs> um. The Lafayette Chargers. Anywho. Sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> um, no, good call. I, I, I look. There were absolutely things, and and they were major things that went wrong that, that caused major game reversals. Um, we talked about this before, though. Case it's the first game of the season. I don't want to say I didn't see these things, but there's a lot of fool's gold that happens. Oh we yeah, talk about the guys oh, absolutely. being gassed. We what we talk about weird bounces, crazy things. The, going the conditioning on. will get better as yeah. the year goes on. There's yeah. no argument with that. The familiarity with the offense will get better as the year goes on. There's no argument th- with that. So Jared Davis will play. Deshaun Hand will play. Yeah, we'll, we'll get the depth back in with our players. We'll be okay. It's okay. Yeah, we should have beat Arizona. But I, I remember hearing just as many people saying we're going to win. We're saying, I'm nervous about this game. I'm nervous about this game. I don't know about Kyler Murray. I don't know. You know, this secret. Hey, it's better than last year. Can we at least say that? Yeah. It's better than last year this time. 100%. Come on. 100%. It could have been. We could have gotten blown out by the rookie quarterback. At least we tied him this time. Do you remember what Matt Ryan do, <laughs> did to us in his rookie year? It was like 500 freaking yards. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Hey, no, th- th- let's talk about steps forward because I, as, as I've said all off season, my big thing this year is seeing the, seeing the coaching staff take this team a step forward. This is a step forward from week one last year. And I want to, <laughs> I want to say fantasy people. I said this in the, in the post game show, fantasy people see this, uh, Hollywood Brown wide receiver, right? No one expected anything. Guy gets 150 yards. How does that happen? Because it's week one. It's it, it, Weird things happen. Crazy matchups happen. Yeah, they do. Hopefully, the weird good things that happen to us continue. Yeah. And the weird bad things don't. Right. And you won't know. It's all you, weird. You can't draw a line without more than one dot. And I think that's part of what the defense does and how they build out what they do. And the the, the amalgamation of film on the other teams helps them get better and, and kind of yeah. focus their plan for the rest of the year. Don't freak out. Be Effective, be nervous, appropriately nervous, though. Mm-hmm. That, that, I think that's that's the way to look at it. So, all right. We've got everyone on blast. We've done our thing. Thanks a lot, Malcolm. Love it when you call, brother. <laughs> and um, hope you're loving it down there in uh, Atlanta. He just moved there this last year. He couldn't make it to our party this year. It was a, it was a bummer. He was, was a lot of fun. All right. Hey, you know, if you got a move case or you're, you're, you're trying to figure out something about something you don't know, 
It's a a book. Sounds usually, pretty common. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A book is usually a good way to get some information on. Maybe you want to get a good movie in. Well, the better selection than Netflix is all available on Amazon. Amazon.DetroitLionsPodcast.com. Get your your of course. I mean, books are. But your ebooks, right? You got your ebooks. You got your audio books because Audible's part of it. You got your your great movies. You got your everything else. I mean, anything you ever need. You you want to get somewhat dodgy supplements to help your libido? <laughs> hey, go to Amazon.DetroitLionsPodcast.com. That's where Case goes. You can see it right there. He's but he's been outed right there in the in the video. Uh, Amazon.DetroitLionsPodcast.com. Here's how it works. You go use that. It goes straight to Amazon, but it plants a cookie over there, and it lets them know that you got there from Chris and Case Detroit Lions Podcast, and um, they give us a little kickback. They don't charge you more. You're taking this money out of Basil's pocket. He doesn't need any more. He's, he's got plenty of money. He owns newspapers and stuff. He's fine. Amazon.DetroitLionsPodcast.com. Help the show out by doing what you're going to do anyway. That's how we try to build all these things. We, we try to help you and give you places to go to do the things that you want to do and get good value that you're looking for. And when you do that, help us out along the way. So there's a great way to do it. All right. Let's talk about somebody. Um, Well, I think Dean Blandino's quote about him was, was the best. This guy needs a and I'm going to find him and just give him a big <laughs> Yeah. Antonio Brown. I don't know if you've heard him. He he gave evidently some beeps and beeps. Um where to start on this story? I mean, we we, we watched <laughs> Well, it's funny. It's funny because I I I wanted to talk about him weeks ago and then it, various things happened and we had to cancel a show and then I wasn't on the show and so it got postponed and postponed. I when I wanted to talk about him, I thought it was the end of the story, but I was clearly wrong. He did not do anything to take himself out of the news. That's for sure. <laughs> so, wow. He, we, we all know the hard knocks. We all know the helmet. Yeah. We all know that he was, he was eventually he planning like Mayaka cracker. to get released. Seems so like he, he was allegedly, he was the right phrasing here. Uh, he was allegedly planning to get released from the Raiders at the end there. He seemed to have a plan. And amazingly, they release him from the Raiders, and he gets picked up by the evil empire of the New England Patriots. And it's like, wow. My wife is like, so my son picked up Antonio Brown in, in fantasy. She's like, oh, no, with everything going on. She's, she, she, she loves her son, right? Wants good things to go for him. And then he gets, you know, he's going to get cut, and he's not. And then now he's cut. Oh, no. And then the, the Patriots pick him up, and she's like, the, boy, the boy's got it. He's going to, he's, it's going to be, he's struck gold, right? And then the news comes out that there's an allegation or, or a couple of allegations from one person about some sexual misconduct on the part of Mr. Brown. This is, I mean, just when you think you can't get crazier, yeah. nobody cares about the helmet anymore, right? Nobody, yeah. nobody cares about him calling Mayak a cracker the anymore. Cryo. <laughs> the cryo you know, feet. Him, try to, him trying to freeze himself until 2000. 25 or something. But I'm just going to tell you, this son of a bitch is crazy. <laughs> He's fucking yeah. straight nuts, man. And and so we've talked a little bit before, at least in the Slack we've talked about, um, the little bit of Titus Young, and, and maybe it's not and maybe it's not so funny about who Yeah, and it's, it, I want to talk about that for a sec after we get through the Antonio Brown thing. But mm-hmm. So we got a guy. Um, he if, if this is true, and, and I don't think anybody would disagree, he's an absolute piece of shit. And we have to say if it's true. I mean, we have to say allegedly and all these things right now because that's the way the legal system works in America and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. And and you're innocent until you're proven guilty. So he, yeah. he, he could I believe in that. be innocent, right? Um and we all agree. I think I don't I think to a person, if he actually did this and he's guilty of this, then then he is totally yes. innocent that you are a piece of <laughs> yes. shit check mark, right? You are Tend a of he, Siberia. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but there's something about this that struck me. And and I, I have to. This is a tough point to make, case. So help me make sure I stay within the the guardrails. I don't want anybody to get the wrong perception mm-hmm. here. Okay, but the thing, all the stuff, we know it's wrong if he did it. We don't know if he did it for sure. All that kind of stuff. But there's one thing that stands out about this. Okay, and we think about it. All right, he's with the the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and you're you're his you're his victim, right? Well, he's made a lot of money. He's super famous. He's the best in the league. Everybody really thinks highly of him. That's okay. I'm just going to roll up. All right. All 
all right, things go crazy. He, he gets out. Okay, now he's signing with the Raiders. Whoa, huge deal. A lot of money there. Ton of ducats in that guy's pocket. And, nah, I'm not gonna, and it's okay. Nothing's going on. And then the helmet, and then he gets the helmet deal. Even more money. Everything's going on. Height, you know, the fame, the notoriety. You could, you people could look at him and say, "This guy's a jerk." Now, like you could, you could have the force of everybody behind you saying, "Wow, this guy is really a head case. This guy is really unpredictable." Nah, nah, I'm not gonna do anything. Signs with the Patriots. That's it. Fuck this guy. I am going all in. <laughs> right? Is that the thing that triggered you? And and, and I asked. I don't. I, I say that kind of tongue in cheek, right? Because I don't think that. It was the Patriots thing that triggered it. But why now? The, the the point in time, and I don't know if it matters or not, right? But it's uh, his whole, he's got a prearranged deal with the Patriots, and that's why he's trying to get dropped by the Raiders. That's like your conspiracy kind of land. Like, I haven't seen real evidence. Everybody's thinking it's true, but I haven't seen that, right? But just, and, 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 and a lot of people talk about it, but by the same token, the timing on this is really, really odd. And it reminds me a lot of the Matt Patricia story insofar as timing, right? Now, the difference is the Matt Patricia story is they dug something up from, what, 20 years ago? And, right. And with no further information, no f- nothing. Right. Further I feel like the timing on that is way more deliberate. That one was purely a smear. Right, and and we don't know if it's true or not, right? Because no, 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 and that it doesn't that isn't me. But that's not. Saying it, I know what happened. That right, is me right, right. saying the timing was clearly way more deliberate. But knowing that nobody was going to change anything from then to, to to when the report came out on Patricia, mm-hmm. that you you look at that that was a hundred percent a smear. That was mm-hmm. yellow journalism. That was trying to mm-hmm. defame a character. Absolutely, I don't think anyone can disagree with that. True or not? Nobody, nothing was changing out of that. This one though is different. But the timing. God, the timing of this is really the, weird. The devil's advocate that I can put forward, and I'm not saying that it, that I disagree with you. Uh, the devil's advocate that I can put forward to you is that if there were maybe other people in her life that she had spoken to, maybe this was the time that they pressured her to go into it. Sure, yeah. Thinking that this was the best time to do it. Um, and and not, that is not to me either saying whether or not I think he's guilty or not either. I, I truly am. I, I, I truly am a believer in an in innocent until proven guilty. Um, and I, I, I also think that the court of public opinion has a tendency to, um, get, get things wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, not to say that they always get things wrong, just to say that they get things wrong a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, if you well, it, it, here let's take Michael Jackson for an example. Oh wow, you're going to an interesting place. Yeah, here. yeah, I am going to an interesting place. Um, <laughs> I hope it doesn't get you arrested. But go ahead. Um, the the court of public opinion on Michael Jackson has gone back and forth and back and forth and back and forth over the last what 30 years yeah oh yeah and nothing is conclusively proven either way so somebody is right and somebody is wrong but the court of public opinion has tried him and made him either innocent or guilty multiple times right. on either front. Yeah. And so the, there are the court of public opinion is not a good system for me personally to decide whether somebody is guilty or not guilty. I've I've convicted him and exonerated him multiple right. times. Right? Exactly. You That's exactly what, I mean? what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's like wow, this is complicated as hell and I don't know, you know, any of the detail on that. So, you yeah, know, you're right. You're absolutely right. And that's the thing. I, I, I say that and you're, you, you are, you're, cause the thing is, is you don't just drop a case in a day. You don't suddenly say, Hey, I'm going to pop. It has obviously been in the works. It has to have been in the works even while he was with the Raiders. And I'll tell you yeah. something. And, and I don't have it in front of me. I forget the name. Um, but I, I, I heard a little bit and, and we have a lawyer. Maybe we'll bring her on and she can evaluate, um, how this, how this, um, this firm works. But my understanding of the plaintiff's firm in this case, um, they don't mess around. They take cases that they know they're going to win. They don't take big, splashy celebrity cases because they want to be in the news. They take cases that they know they're going to win, period, and they are damn good and have a real strong reputation for not taking bad cases and not lo- not losing. 
So I have it gives me a sense by who the attorneys are here that they may have a really good case against Mr. Brown. So we'll see how it goes. But um, <laughs> if he's innocent, I hope he gets exonerated. If he's not, I hope he freaking fries. Yeah. And then and, and that's that, right? I mean, completely agree. Photo. Completely agree. All right. Um, from there, that's a dark topic. I want to go to like kind of a little bummer, man. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to do this, but um, there's a guy that was in Detroit media for a long time. He wanted to be in the voice of the Cavaliers. Um, if you watched the preseason games when the Detroit broadcast crew was was doing the uh, the the sh- the uh, broadcasts, um, the the guy who does like Dan Miller's a play by play guy on TV. His name is Fred McLeod, and he was a real good. He was great at his job. He was a consummate professional. Again, he wanted to be in the voice of the Cavaliers. He really good, solid guy. Spent a lot of years in Detroit doing sports and, and working in Detroit. And, uh, remember him? He, he had a uh, Sunday sports show. Fred McLeod was was really just kind of part of just part of the scene. And 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 I really liked the way he delivered things. It wasn't super fantastical. It wasn't high, you know. We didn't have highlights. We, 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 we just had the straight shot of what's going on, really delivered well. Fred was great. He was a classy A fella and, and just a credit to the profession. And he passed away. And I uh, just want to, you know, our best to the family, our condolences to the family. And um, the, the world, sports world's a worse place without his voice in it. So that, that kind of sucks. So there we go. I just wanted to say something about Fred because uh, he was, he was a, good, a good guy and a consummate professional. Um, <sighs> boy, this is the... <laughs> Hey, fanatics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fred would go there. Uh, <laughs> uh, Fanatics.DetroitLionsPodcast.com. Same like the Amazon thing, but if you want to get any kind of sports uh, stuff, whether it's Lions, Red Wings, I don't know about Tigers. You're probably not big into that right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, hoops, college ball, you like your Michigan, you like your Michigan State, whoever you're, you're after. I know we got some Ohio State people out there as well. Go to Fanatics.DetroitLionsPodcast.com. It's a great way to get all your gear, tailgating gear, um, your your wearables, the whole thing, anything you can think of with the the team's logo on it is there. If you go to fanatics.detroitlionspodcast.com, it'll set that cookie. Let them know we sent you, and uh, you know, takes a little bit out of the NFL's cut, and uh, it helps us out. So help us out by doing something you're doing anyway. Fanatics.detroitlionspodcast.com. All right. So I got to talk about n- another topic. We we'll fly into this one. Um, you know, I'm a sucker for hype videos, right? Sandman was the was. But I've always liked it, but Sam Ann's always like just kind of yeah. screwed me up. He's done such a good job with the slow lights and, and his hype video at the beginning of the year every year. Um, we had one, and, and I got into a conversation, a uh, side conversation in the Slack with Lance. Um, I'll just say Lance S because I don't want to put his whole name out there. And he was like, man, what's going on? You guys used to do that super hype audio in the post-game show. And I would, I, he said, I went back and listened to an episode, and I was just like, yeah, man. That is, I was like ready. There was so much ready. Jim Caldwell in there, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It was all full of Jimmy. Jimmy C. And uh, we didn't come here to do this. We yeah. came here to do this. Not next year. Not, <laughs> not this year. Not now. Day, yeah. now. We're here to win that, right? And people love yeah. that. And I did too. And and it's funny because I, I feel like I'm a pretty good evaluator of these hype videos because i like i said i'm a total sucker for them and and i've created that one i i I got done with that and i listened to it and i was like oh i'm so stoked i love i'm in right i mean now it it hyped me up and 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 i created so i put a new one together case and we used it this last week in the in the post game show at the beginning and i know you didn't get to hear it and i wanted to get your reaction and i wanted everyone else's reaction because again i'm i'm a little biased because i'm i'm a sucker for a hyper but i think this is a good one so, do you mind if I, I just pop it on real quick Please. and give a listen? All right. Hey. All right, this is it. Let me let me know what you guys think here. There's one goal here, and one promise I made to Mrs. Ford is winning. For that to happen, everyone needs to be on the same page to be in the best position with the right plan. Every person in this building has a job to do, and each job is important. If we can get one step better every day, that's putting this organization in the right direction. Donald steps up in the pocket, now throws. It is picked up by Ryan. Come back right side. Inside the 10. It is Quadre Diggs to the 5. To the house. Touchdown to Quadre. How about that for an opening at Oh, my God. It, it is Sir Mix-a-Lot booty thick. 
<laughs> so I, I, I keep manually adding the Riz piece at the end. I don't know. So you know. <laughs> it really makes it. It really makes it. <laughs> what do you think, man? I, I, I feel it. I, I like actually. Yeah. Yeah. No, am I, am I biased? Me, gets me going. All right. All right. Let us know. You know, there's a thread in the suburb. Let us know what you guys think. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit proud of that. I like that one. I think we're going to use that. I think for the Dan Miller piece, because he gave us. He, he gave us permission to use his, his broadcast. Right. It was really cool of him. Um, I'm thinking of like each week updating that from the, from the last week. Oh, man. That would be very cool. And, yeah. And, and now I'm thinking, I, I've been thinking about make like a good Kenny version. Kenny Galladay, how good is that kid? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Make a good version and then a bad version, depending on how we do. That's the right. version we'd hear. But then there's the, right. all the stuff that people don't get to see, right? It's the, the hidden tracks, the deep cuts. So when we're dead, they can dig them up and release another album. So anyway, right. let us know. Let us know the suburb. Let us know what you thought of the the hype video. I, I'm 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 feeling good about it. But uh, thanks, Lance. You're the one that inspired me to put that together, and uh, I'm glad with what turned out. I was I, I told them I'm like I've tried to do a couple since, and they just didn't have it. They didn't move me, and uh, I was like I'll try it again. And this one just came together just right. So we'll see. Let's see what people say. All right. Um, with that, let's look ahead. Um, I don't yeah. know if we're going to do it this week. Riz and I have been talking about doing those quick take shows again where we come in Friday and do a look ahead to the next game. But it's always good to get Case's insight as well, because let's face it, I mean, we, we love to hear Case's drunken rambling. <laughs> he seems he seems to be more sober lately, and I don't know if it's good or bad for us. We'll see how this plays out, right? <laughs> but let's take a look at the Chargers game. This is, this I'm is just better at hiding it, Chris. Maybe, maybe that is the case. Um, the Chargers practice, game is... Practice, practice, <laughs> practice, 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 see, practice. I keep my amateur status so I can be in the Olympic team. <laughs> um, let's talk about the Chargers. The, the one thing about this team, two things I, I actually will say about this team that stand out. Number one, the performance against the Chargers. They struggled. They struggled against I mean sorry, against the Colts. They had a hard time against that Colts mm-hmm. team. And I think it was a one point win in the end that they were able to pull out. Again, it's it's week one. There's fool's gold here, so make sure, you know, that you, you mm-hmm. kind of put that right lens on there. But the other side of it is there's some serious injuries going on in Chargers land. Well, if you go back to um notice that in San know? Diego, Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> What are we doing? Biodome here? I don't know. Um, if you go back to June, I think I had the Chargers as my number two team in the AFC, maybe my number two team overall. Was that when you were um, originally going to deliver the... Um, yep. The- <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> the power wankings. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're we're not going to have power wankings. We may talk about it on the show at some point. Do oh we, yeah, do I we, do them every week for the for the RNFL power ranking group. Maybe we should do um, like the top five every week. Bring your top five to the show. And we'll just talk about who the top five are, and then the Lions. we could do we could start that next week. I'd yeah, have to yeah, pull yeah, up a bunch yeah, of. We'll do that next I'd, week. I'd have to pull, pull up a bunch of shit. Okay. To figure that out, so you know? so you're doing um, the power wankings. We'll do the top mm-hmm. five, and then I had the, the Chargers are. number two, and then Derwin James got hurt for the year, and I dropped him a little bit. And then this week, Hunter Henry and Mike Williams are injured. So, I mean, they've lost three of their best, three of their top 10 players, uh, two of which for the year, one of which at least for a while. Um, So that changes the outlook this week. That doesn't mean that I would predict the Lions will beat them. It does not mean that. But it certainly evens the playing field by quite a bit yeah, because right. I mean I mean you got you've got your top skill position player and your top tight end and you've got your top safety out and they struggled against the Colts and while I uh, while the Colts are actually uh they were also one of my you know top 5 teams prior to the Andrew Luck retirement uh they still struggled against uh backup quarterback so um it is a winnable game all of a sudden a game that i thought you know and i think everybody thought was totally you know not a host well and and this is do you remember last year, the New England game? We talked about that. And I remember I remember saying very clearly, can you imagine what would happen to people's brains if we won this game? Right. right. And it's, it's, right. it's not as powerful. I think that's more the Kansas City game 
coming up if we won that well, game. And, and, and if we want to, it's too close. It's too soon to talk too much about the Kansas City game. Right. But they're going to be missing Tyreek Hill, okay. and I think Tyreek Hill is the most important skill position player on that team. Yeah. So all of a sudden, they have to change everything. It'll be interesting to see how they play this week. So, like, I. I and still think, Detroit. you know, and Detroit. Again, Both again, of these games are I'm in not, Detroit. Right, right. I'm not predicting a win against the Chiefs. I'm not predicting a win against the Chargers. But we're certainly in a position where if we came out with one win out of these two games, it would be a huge, complete shock to me. Can I tell you who the most important player is in both the Chiefs game and the Chargers game? Who? Uh, and, and it's a stupid reference. The 12th man. The people oh. sitting in the stadium <laughs> are going to be fucking critical here. We have the home field advantage, yeah. and we need to seize it. These are opportunity games for us. These are opportunity games for this yeah. team. And if you walk in there and start fucking booing five minutes into the first quarter, then just just sell your ticket and walk away. This is this. It's early in the season. It's the hardest part of the season. This is when it matters. If you're if you're a jump off the boat kind of, just sell your ticket. Don't go. Sell it to somebody yeah. who's going to be loud because this is the time. This is the time where you set the tone for the season. The team does. The fans do. Period. Ebron isn't there. There's no need to boo anymore. Get your shit together. Cheer this team on and be loud. And if these and, and after these, if by the by, we're at a point where it's irreversible and we can see. Uh, if I, we are one, two, and one going into the buy. We have great chances going forward. Absolutely. Use do not be this defeatist piece of crap that you saw after we wound up with a tie in Arizona an opening day. Go to those if you're in those if you're in that stadium, you be loud and you do your part and support the damn team. It, there's plenty of season left if you want to boo. This is not the time to do it. This is the time to bring forth every you expect those players to play hard? You expect those those the, that team to perform. That's your job now. It, it, you you give up early, forget it. Get get out of there. You, you, if you're giving up on the team now after one game in Arizona, but yet you expect the players to play a full four quarters, go fucking pound sand. Seriously, this is your job. It's early enough where if you're going to be a fan and you're going to go to the game, do your job. Do your job. After the buy, if things are upside down and the wheels are falling off, then then it's absolutely open and, and, and voice your criticism. But it's too early to abandon the team. Don't do that, please. I, I I'll say it. We I, Flounderish has said this. He's in Washington, and Seattle has a tough game. They have a tough loss, or they had a close game this week. Fans there after that tough, embarrassing loss would say. We've got we've we've got to learn from this. We've got to get better. This is something we've got to get our shit together, and we'll see where it happens. Lions fans are freaking lighting the mattress on fire and diving in, right, and throwing the kids in there. Stop! It's too early. Let's just get our let's get it together, folks. Okay, sorry. I, I, I'll get off my little my soapbox there, but I just I, I was I was distraught by how many people were were so blown up over a tie in week one. It's any given Sunday, any team can win, and that's that's the, the level of t- talent. In the NFL right now. That's it? You don't have anything? That's it. Wow. No, no, that was good. That's our look ahead. All right. As we record this, boy, there's there's a little, there's a lot of somber in this, in this show. (laughs) Well, it's hard to come off of. Actually, actually, there was a lot of somber after the game. As everybody's leaving, you know, you you expect to leave the game and either the home team or the away team fans are excited and celebrating. But as everybody's walking out of the Arizona game, everybody's just like, I want to go home. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I want to. I, I just as we as we get into this, as we record this, it's um, September 11th, which is an anniversary that I think will yep. live in our lifetimes. Nobody will forget yep. what it means, and it'll forever be ingrained, and, and people know where they were when it happened, and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Um. You know, whatever you think about when when you think about the folks that are you know in the police force or the fire or the military or whatever. Um, the, the one that reality is on, on this day, a long time ago, a lot of people gave their lives to, to help save innocent people who, who, who hadn't done anything. And they, they, they ran towards the problem. And, um, even today, and a lot the, of people have given their lives since because of their 
courageous actions that day. Absolutely. And, and you know, it doesn't matter what profession you find bad apples in it. We can't let them define the vast majority of those folks that are out there that are doing their best to help us out. And so a day like today, it's a, it's a great time to remember those folks that serve um, police, fire, the military, Coast Guard, all across the, the, the board, all the folks that are out there and, and, and help make this country as great as it is and help us enjoy this game of football. We're not paid. We're not doing any of the things like the NFL does. This is just a sincere thing. Um, I, I thought about it. There's a guy named Wagner who, who had sent some, some nice things about us out on the, uh, um, out on the Twitter machine. And I, I just, I just hit him up and said, thanks for it. And, um, we started, we started chatting and he's, he's in the Navy. He's, he's away on, on base in Nevada. Um, must be a dry dock. I don't know how the fuck he had any boats in Nevada, but whatever. <laughs> he's, 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 he's there. Land and doing sharks. Land sharks, Chris. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Better than land whales. Uh, he's doing this thing. And, um, we talked and he was really cool. I just want to say hi to his dad, Jack, his mom, Tammy Jackson, his brother, and Simbri, his wife. He's, he's, he's working hard and doing his thing. And, uh, it was cool. He talks about being out there and, and, you know, he's doing his part. And um, he's got no Lions people out there. I totally get it, right? That's how this whole thing started. We were, we were two abandoned Lions fans right out in the islands by yep. ourselves. Yep. And um, we just bring him a little hope. And that's one of the things that was one of our first things that we want to do. We were embraced by people around the world. That's where the Guam thing and everything else came from. That, mm-hmm. that people, it, Slovenia, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I could tell you people all around the world that we talk to and that, that listen to the show. And um, it's it's all it all came out of that. So Wagner, you and your family, uh, thanks for all you do, and everyone else who serves in in all those different places. Thanks a lot. We re- we really appreciate you and all that you do. All right, uh, from there, let's uh, Casey, you, you can do a little bit. I know there's a little bit here for you. Let's go uh, around. All right, boys. All right, all right, all right. Calm down. Calm yeah, down. Calm down. Oh, God, that drop is so great. Got I this. love it. Okay, okay, go ahead. All right. So, yeah, we're, we're going to keep it short. Um, Packers played Bears. It was an ugly game. First game of the season. Uh, not surprising that it was an ugly game. Not surprising if you've been listening to this podcast that the Packers defense did a really good job. Also not surprising if you've been listening to this podcast that the Bears didn't look great. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we can take both of those teams case after that game. Really, really. I feel like we've got a good balance to take based yes. on how they play again, week one, yes. one week, whatever, but they, ooh, they both good. have very good looking defenses mm-hmm. still. Mm-hmm. still. um, Aaron Rodgers had the highest percentage of, of inaccurate throws in the entire NFL in week one. But again, you're talking about the Bears possibly, uh, well, I, I, I would say certainly a top three defense um, in theory. How many batted passes do they have at the line of scrimmage? I don't remember. Not four. <laughs> <laughs> um, but point being, uh, it, w- it was pretty clearly a defensive struggle. So, I mean, both of those teams are good defensive teams questionable offensive teams. Mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers or no Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Mitch Trubisky did not have a pleasant outing. So Yeah, um, no, no, he he I saw I, I had to go visit the Bears subreddit after that. And oh my God, the the maybe he is who they say he is was a little thing that I heard a lot and saw a lot. They are actually starting to already see that maybe the Elal Bears trade for Trubisky shit that we used to gave him shit for, it was real because, boy, yeah. he is oh, yeah. just... <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it is picking up steam, and, and he, has a, he, has, he has more to prove maybe right now than any quarterback in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. More than percent. So, sure. uh, that being said, okay, we, we, we think both the Packers and the Bears defenses are good. Both the Packers and Bears offenses are questionable. Uh, we unfortunately are terrified of the Vikings. Yeah, holy shit! Did they look good? <laughs> oh my god! That, I, that I, I, two- I was so I I you know you guys didn't get my power rankings, but in my power rankings, I think oh, I had the Vikings number four. <laughs> I think I think I had the power. Uh, I think I had them number four. Uh, holy when this Lee 
shit. That yeah. was just the first two series, right? I mean, they just I think they murdered three people and 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 one of them was a punter. It was crazy yeah. how freaking hard they hit. They yeah. were, oh my god. They they now, terrify me. I, I'm the question you, about right sustainability now. has to come up. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, you have you have to hold up that level of energy over a whole season. Mm-hmm. So I mean that's that's not a given by any means, but I put them I put them number two in my power rankings this week after the Patriots, and I, I caught some flack for it on the uh, official RNFL power rankings thread. Power rankings. I, I don't I don't want to put them there. I have no desire whatsoever to put the Vikings number two, but uh, it, it, they did what they needed to do with the offensive line to improve that so that they have an average to above average offense. Uh, Kirk Cousins is an average quarterback. Uh, And uh, Dalvin Cook, I was skeptical. I have been skeptical about Dalvin Cook uh, because I I don't trust his health. And and I don't trust his health long term still. So, I mean, at at any time, at any time this year, if he goes out, that, that hurts them significantly. And they can but, fall in the power rankings. That we got seven weeks for him to get hurt. So, yeah, not that I'm wishing yeah. anybody gets hurt, right? But, nope, nope. For, for but, the Lions, but, but, chances, but I mean, things could change a lot. Things could change a lot case, for the next several weeks. I did not see anybody in week one with as dominating a defense as Minnesota had. They have a game altering defense. If they can bring that every week, I, I, they're just going to destroy every other offense. They're not going to yep. have a chance. They're going to win just through attrition. And, yeah. and, and and Kirk Cousins, it could be completely mediocre across the board. Yep. They're going to put points on the board. Yep. That's I won't good. argue with that at all. Wow. I, 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 hate, I, I, I don't hate like that we're talking about that. Yeah. But that is that is where we are right now. That's the truth. So, and if, if we take a win from them this year, that that's huge. That's, so so two, the hope oh, is that we come in second in the division this year. <laughs> and that, the, and that my prediction that my prediction that the Vikings uh, cap issues will cause them to have major problems next year comes true. And the true. Bears too, right? Bears I mean, the Bears are, are already suffering yeah, from it. And yeah. we're seeing that. So I, I, I think my prediction of that is already, you know, Coming to fruition, yeah. but um, yeah. So I mean, I mean, we, we just gotta hope that next year is our year because the the Vikings are falling are going to fall apart after this year. <laughs> 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 oh God, it's so depressing. <laughs> I, know. I know it's it's so depressing. Waiting. So okay. Well, that's it. I can you. you don't even, you don't, none of you even live in Vikings territory. I shouldn't say that, but it, barely any of you, if any of you. I have to deal with this all season long. This is going to be a long season, Chris. This is going to be a really long season. Pray for injuries, my friend. It's <laughs> terrible. All right. Um, hey, really quick, one last thing we want to talk about. Um, you got your tickets. You want to go see your Lions games. You want to go see your hoops games. You got your college football. You got hockey coming. You got the whole thing, right? You want to go see some. Some good concerts. I know Case is signing up for Taylor Swift here. Uh, oh, no. No, I'm sorry. That was I Prevail. I'm sorry. Oh. I, I got confused. Wait, I got confused, too. What did I sign up for? <laughs> uh, so, what are you going to do? You want to pick your seat before someone else picks it for you, because whose fingers do you want up there, really? Uh, ticks.detroitlionspodcast.com. Ticks.detroitlionspodcast.com. Set yourself up with the greatest seats. And uh, it, like the rest of the stuff, they give us a kickback by by doing that. TIX.detroitlionspodcast.com. And you can get your tickets from SeatGeek to anywhere, anywhere, and anything, any show, and you pick your seat. It's a great deal. 